I've been hearing rumors about Arco Linux for quite a while now, and here is the first time I'm actually laying eyes on it. Well, the installer anyways, which is, you guessed it, a Calamares live session. But this isn't any old Calamares. See, Arco Linux is well known for being basically a big giant Arch installer. Eh, kind of. I guess maybe it's somewhere between the Zen installer and Manjaro in that it is a big ol' installer, but it's not quite a full-blown distro in its own right. Or is it? Now there's a lot to unpack here, but as you know, this is installer delves, not distro delves, not installer delves, this is distro delves, so let's just run through the madness here real quick. There's this little category section for each application type, I guess. Most of them are GUI-based applications like document suites or browsers or text editors, but there are a few CLI or power tool apps here and there too. The lists of apps, while cool, are ergonomically terrible. Like, come on, these are just checkboxes with no descriptions or anything. It looks bad and it feels bad. The login screen, on the other hand, was styled real nice and the desktop was, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'd call this pretty, but I've certainly seen worse. Look at the bottom right hand side. There's no spacing between my username and the time. Like, ugh. The welcome app is honestly kinda lame too. It's here where we first see the dreaded icons that Arco uses by default. Some of the icons in the welcome app are completely ambiguous, like if you don't know what the Discord logo looks like, you won't know that it's Discord, and when you click some of the icons, they pop up and ask for the super user password, so you don't even know what you're authenticating for. Just sketchy to say the least. It was a while ago, but I recall Scupake referring to these icons as very bad, and I think I would agree. Now I normally save this section for later in the show, but Arco Linux runs NeoFetch each time you open a terminal, so uh... Yeah, this is Arco Linux running kernel version 5.4.45, which is the LTS kernel, which we chose during the install. There is 1,420 packages installed with bash 5.0. The desktop environment here is XFCE 4.14 with XFWM4 as the window manager and compositor. No Compton here. Now DF is telling us that this particular install of Arco weighs 18 gigabytes. That is the heaviest distro we've seen on the show so far. But the desktop here is only using 600 megabytes at idle and in the CPU department we see 82 tasks and 152 threads. So the default Arco desktop is just XFCE with the Arc theme and a very strange icon set. It looks a bit dated, but it's honestly not that bad if not for the choice of icons. I should note that despite it having a Windows-esque layout with like the panel and stuff on the bottom, my Windows or Meta key as it's sometimes called didn't open the whisker menu, so that's a little annoying. XFWM has compositing and transparency stuff enabled, but I wonder how that will affect the gaming performance later on. Arco has this handy thing called the Arco Linux Tweak Tools, and it's very similar to the Sparky Linux Tools and the MX Tools. But Arco goes beyond both of those, allowing you to install entire desktops rather than just like run or install apps. You can change the bootloader background here, as well as configure adblock and modify like the NeoFetch config, probably the most random grouping of tools I've ever seen. I still hear people complain about things like System D not following the Unix philosophy, but somehow everyone is okay with the Arco Linux tweak tool modifying an assortment of just random stuff, trying to do it all as it were. But if you were ever wondering which Linux distro ships with the best backgrounds, wonder no longer. Arco Linux takes the crown here. I have never seen such an awesome collection of wallpapers on a Linux distro. Makulu Linux was close, but this is just like head and shoulders above anything else. These backgrounds make me forgive the giant install footprint. And you wouldn't have noticed unless I pointed it out here, but again, much like Makulu Linux, Arco ships with Conky and a ton of themes pre-installed too. So now let's briefly talk about the application selection for a moment. It is just, if you ever wanted to see what it was like to have practically every app pre-installed, you are pretty damn close here with Arco Linux. And the icon set again makes it difficult for me to see even like what I'm looking at or what I'm looking for. I only installed four, maybe five apps during the installer, so everything else here is just default. I've talked about distros having duplicate apps before and it is a pet peeve of mine, but I can't think of any other distro that takes it to this scale. This definitely helps explain the install size for sure. 
Everything was fine in the external devices test, though Arco did ask for my root password to mount my encrypted drive, which is a little stupid. EXFAT support is included, as well as RAR file support and basically every media codec you can think of. And to no surprise, audio and video files opened in multiple different players since, you know, there's like a half dozen of each pre-installed. App image support was good, but Flatpak support was only okay because Arco seems to ship with an old version of GNOME software and it was terrible. I don't know, it seems like GNOME software, when it launches for the first time, it has to like do a bunch of caching and stuff and sometimes it just fails and doesn't work at all. I've seen this very thing happen, I don't know how many times on the show, and I mean, we're looking at it here. Flatpak support was available and it worked just fine, it's just that GNOME software sucks. Network discovery was a bit of a mixed bag. There's no DLNA media sharing and there's no obvious way of setting up Samba share like for folders, yet all of my Samba shares on my network showed up in the network browser without any configuration. So that's cool. Printer support was unimpressive because not only does it require root to manage printers, it doesn't auto detect or auto install my printer despite having drivers for it. And Bluetooth was a no-go. I'm guessing the drivers weren't installed or something because it sees the hardware, but there's nothing happening. Like normally it detects a tile and some other stuff. There's nothing going on here. So let's talk performance and see if the compositing that XFWM is doing causes any problems in gaming. It usually causes like stuttering or hitching, but I decided to compare Arco against the Zen installer because that's as close to vanilla Arch as we're getting on the show and Arco pulled two frames higher with 50 frames a second. I'm playing with the keyboard here because, you know, no Bluetooth controller and it was uh, probably as smooth as I've ever seen it. Next up we've got War Thunder and I'll say the gameplay was amazingly smooth, especially when compared to Arch with the Zen installer. Remember how the sky was all glitched out? These are the same drivers and it's running faster at 30 frames a second without glitching. And last up is GTA 5, which ran pretty darn well with only a little bit of hitching in highly populated places. It's really interesting to see how different GTA runs across different distros we've looked at here on the show. I endeavor to say that it might just be running the best here on Arco. For the Geekbench stuff, comparing Arco to Arch with Zen, the GPU scores were almost the same with Arco having just a tiny lead. Now I wanted to spice things up for the CPU scores a bit, so I compared Arco to Clear Linux, both of them using the LTS kernel, and interestingly, Clear kind of blew Arco away here even though they're both using that LTS kernel. So Arco Linux is a really strange distro. If I were just getting into Linux for like the very first time way back in the day and I wanted to experience all of the things from apps to desktop environments and whatever else, Arco would have been the ticket. Today, I just want a Linux distro that looks and works good right out of the box and honestly, Arco just isn't that. I mean, it seems to work okay, minus the Bluetooth stuff, but with XFCE as the default desktop, needing to install your desktop of choice and theme it, it's just a lot of work and I don't want it. Now, when I was first learning about Linux, it seemed like every time I turned around, there was another desktop environment that I hadn't heard of and it was awesome. And Arco not only lists all of them, but lets you install them. Now granted, I didn't try out every desktop environment in the tweak tools, so maybe some of them are like borked and bogus, whatever, but even the fact that it lists all of them is really cool. Now in my opinion, Arco is not pretty, and it's a bit rough around the edges, but if you're cool with that, and you want to sort of build your own Arch-based distro just for you, I think Arco is really the best choice out there. I hope you liked this episode of Distro Delves, and if you did, be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, if you want to support me and the show, you can become a patron and enjoy cool stuff that I do over on uh, Patreon. I appreciate all your support, and thanks for watching.